Jason Rueda will serve fewer years behind bars for killing his wife. That's thanks to a partially successful appeal at the Supreme Court. Yesterday, that ruling upheld that he was guilty of strangling his wife, Susan, to death at a Stellenbosch hotel in 2016. But the wealthy property boss also managed to convince the SCA to shave off several years from his prison term. What does this say about our brutal war against gender-based violence? And what are the actual facts? And the big question is, do wealthier South Africans have an easier ride in our courts? Well-known gender activist Lisa Vetten has read the judgment and joins us now live. Lisa, I've looked at the media summary. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, first of all. I've looked at the, at the media summary from the, uh, the Supreme Court, and it said that while the state had found beyond reasonable doubt that Rueda had manually strangled his wife, they couldn't prove uh, that the higher court had found that he had smothered her with a pillow. Yes, well, and a lot of this is a testimony around whether or not her ribs were broken as a result of the assault, whether, the rib, whether her ribs were broken in relation to um, CPR. The, the very time revive her after she died. I'm sorry, somebody's using a weed eater right outside my window. Can you hear me? Uh, I can. It's, it's a, little bit, uh, a little bit wobbly, but carry on. We'll tell you if there's a, a big problem. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, as a consequence, because there, there is that uncertainty, they then gave him 15 years, which is the minimum sentence for a murder that is not premeditated which is kind of in keeping with what Judge um, Sally Chopin originally found, because if she had found there to be being premeditated murder, he would have gotten a minimum sentence of life. So what they took off here was the three years in relation to the question of whether or not he had assaulted her, broken her ribs, and um, smothered her. He was found to have still strangled her. So in that sentence, in that respect, he remains guilty. The two years they were, um, that he has to serve for obstructing and defeating the end of justice remains part of his sentence. So he will serve 17 years instead of the 20 years. So he is, the conviction was upheld, but in terms of the sentence, he got three years less prison time. That's right, in relation to the murder. And that was because it was found not to be premeditated. All right. Just in terms of, um, I mean, he's out on, he's been out on bail and staying in Plettenberg Bay for uh, all this time pending appeal in the Supreme Court. Uh, he now has to hand himself over to the nearest uh, uh, police station, I should think. Yes, that's correct. I think one of the points that needs to be made is that he clearly doesn't show much of a sense of remorse and nor is he willing to take responsibility for his actions. He's come to the end of the road and now he really does need to go and hand himself in. Traditionally speaking, he would have 48 hours in terms of when that sentence was handed down for him to have um, then gone to the, to, to the nearest police station in order to hand himself over. Lisa, just something that has been bothering I think both of us for years having covered uh, gender-based violence is, you know, he had one of the top legal counsel uh, criminal advocates in the country representing him before the SCA. Do you think that the wealthier you are, the less time you get in jail and the less likely you are to get convicted? That certainly does make a difference because you can pay for experts who can come and lead testimony, who can create all the kinds of uh, the necessary reasonable doubt in order for you to escape conviction or a lesser sentence. In his case, his experts don't seem to have held a lot of water. They don't seem to have had much effect on altering his sentence at all. So sometimes it works for you, sometimes it doesn't. And of course, I think the other thing, if you're wealthy, and you've seen this with somebody like the former president, Jacob Zuma, is that you can indefinitely go to every single court in order to delay the length of time that you spend in prison. Um, I think we saw that also with uh, Oscar Pretorius, his attempts also using the best counsel to alter his sentence. But it doesn't always work. Um, and in this sentence, and in this case, it seems not to, which is to the good. So you can uh, buy time, but you can't necessarily... Uh avoid prison altogether. Thank you so much to gender activist Lisa Vetten. And once again, apologies for the sound there. Uh, we tried to deal with it, but uh, it was still a bit scratchy.